that's, uh, that on that fifth day, getting ready to go to get that done, I was walk walking around my office and I started noticing that things were missing. And it was like only half of my desk was there. And I turned my head and I could see my desk and thinking, that's really weird. And uh, I reached for my, my I, have a, I had a Diet Coke and I reached to get my Diet Coke and I couldn't, I couldn't see my hand. I thought, something's up. And so I thought, I better get up to the house real quick. The house was only like a block from my office. And so I reached over to grab the doorknob and I couldn't find the doorknob because I couldn't see where my hand was. And uh, that kind of scared me, so I got in the car and it was only a block long. It's like I was just going up a big hill. And I got to the top of the hill, and that took me maybe 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And by the time I got up there, I didn't even know where I was at. And I looked around, and I was thinking, you know, I could see the road, and I could see the driveway, but I, you know, I couldn't remember. Do I turn on the driveway? Do I turn on the, the road? It's the weirdest thing in the world. It's, it's you know, obviously this is all, the stroke, and really what a stroke is, is there's no blood getting to the brain, so the brain starts dying. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of looked around and I saw that there were houses, but I couldn't remember where my house was at. I had enough sense to know I had Carolyn on my speed dial, and I called her and I said, babe, look out the window and see if you see the van, because I don't even know where I'm at. And just about... 30 seconds later, here comes Carolyn and Mariah running, and they're trying to open the door. Of course, you know, in our van, when you get up to like five miles an hour, it automatically locks the doors. And I'm trying to think, trying to remember how to turn, the, or unlock the doors. And it's like everything is real, real, real slow motion. And you can't, your thoughts are just, it's not, it's like you're almost gone. You just can't think. And it literally took me, I bet, in my mind, I don't know if in real life, but it felt like it took me about a minute to remember there's a door lock and there's a thing, a button I push. If I push that button, I'll unlock the door. And it just like it took me so long to process all that. Finally, I got the door unlocked and Carolyn rushed me to the hospital. And, <clears throat> and uh, you know, after uh, several tests, they found out that I had had a stroke. Matter of fact, one of the things they did, I'm sure some of you noticed these two scars I've got on either side of my head. Um, actually, some of you probably think that's where they removed the horns. <laughs> but uh, but uh, that, that they did that because they didn't know why I was losing my eyesight. And so they, they thought there was an infection in the brain, and so they, they were doing biopsies with that, that vessel that runs to your brain. Well, anyway, when, when I look at Carolyn, uh, when I see her, this is exactly what I see. This is how it looks to me. So all that black that you see there is what's missing now in my field of view. Now, the part that and I'm so grateful that I still have vision in that area because that, that still allows me to be able to preach. I can still look at my, my screen and I can preach and I can... I'm kind of slow when it comes to getting around things. Like right now, everything's so dark, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even venture to try to go down these steps right now. But, you know, the doctors, several different doctors told me that if that stroke was hit right back here, if it would have hit anywhere else, I would have lost either my ability to talk or my ability to move. And, and they said if there's a, a perfect place to have it, you had it in that place. So. But I am really trusting the Lord and, and just leaning on Him to yeah. heal my eyes. Yeah. I, I'm asking you all to pray with me on that. And I'm trying to do everything that <clears throat> I can do to, uh, to see that done as we trust the Lord. And uh, it's a, an issue of the brain. My eyes are fine. Physically, there's nothing wrong, but there's no signal that's being interpreted by the brain. So uh, there's nothing the, the, the doctors can do. <clears throat> and I, I tell you what happened, and then I'm going to preach. Forgive me for taking this long. 
But uh, ever since I was a teenager, almost every single morning I get up, almost without fail, I will, there will be a, a verse in my mind or a song in my mind every single day. And it's always something different every single morning. And it's kind of neat, because I remember when I was uh, probably 15, 16 years old, I would sit down and I would write what I kept a little diary and I would write it because every day was something different. Because it would help apply to me for that day. And it was really kind of neat. And, uh, and I remember getting up that morning <clears throat> And this verse just kept going through my mind, but it was like it was really, the volume was really turned up. And it's the verse that says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the part of that verse it just kept, it was like it was on instant replay. And I'm not joking, it, it literally was on the loop over and over and over again for probably an hour, and it just kept saying, the Lord is my strength and my redeemer. The Lord is my strength and my redeemer. Of course, I'm thinking, that's awesome, but I'm really not sure why this verse keeps going over my head. It was like I couldn't even hardly think, because it just kept going over and over again. Little did I know that what I was about to experience, I was going to have to truly apply that in my life. See, because... When you, when you, this happens to you, there's no, nothing that positive thinking can do for you. I mean, having a really great, great attitude, you know, oh yeah, we're going to make it. Listen, I mean, all the strength that you can muster up is not good enough. I mean, when you're talking about something as traumatic as this, one out of every three people that have this massive stroke end up dying. It's a major killer. But I was laying there on the hospital bed, and all of a sudden, I started understanding why that verse was going in my head. It was because the Lord is my strength. It's not my positive attitude. It's not Amen. my. It's not my ability. It's not. Uh, and you know what else? The Lord is my redeemer. It's not that doctor. It's not that hospital. It's not some kind of medicine. It's the Lord. The Lord is my strength. And the Lord is my redeemer. And I'm telling you, I stand before you all right now, and I can tell you with all my heart, no matter what you face, no matter what you go through, the Lord is your strength. And the Lord is your redeemer. And it doesn't matter if it's something that has nothing to do with health, if it's just something that you're going through personally, or a situation in your home, in your marriage, or in your family, or in your job, or whatever the thing is, you need to remind yourself. You know, the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. And you have to do that sometimes. You know, because you're going to, you're going to have um, every one of you. And I'm not saying this to speak anything to your life, but every one of you are going to have situations that's going to come in your life. You're going to have to really learn to trust the Lord. Amen. And it's better to learn it right now so that when it comes, you will be prepared. Amen. So anyway, I just thought I'd take a few moments to talk about that. And I sure would hope that you all will keep in touch. I know that uh, a few of you here are my friends on Facebook. And uh, that's always makes me feel good to have, uh, you know, contact and it's always a neat thing to be able to do that but we have some neat videos on YouTube they're all uh, different messages that I've done uh, you know for, uh, for a couple of years here so take advantage of that and, and uh, keep in touch with us